Today is May 3rd. For quite some time the weather was definitely not the thing that got me out of the bed early, and as I thought that this year's spring couldn't get any better, it started snowing. I'm happy that today I don't have to go anywhere, so I will stay at home and get some work done on my game. For quite some time I've been trying to finish up the main game loop and I started feeling quite burned out. So I thought I will change things a bit and begin working on the basic campaign system. At this point I got a bit worried because the code started to get messy and I probably wouldn't really care too much. But it especially bothers me when I'm working on a new functionality that must work nicely with the old one. Right now I need a reliable way to communicate with the game scene from the campaign's interface. But I guess I should firstly explain the campaign a bit more because I don't recall doing that. Campaign is a short war story about two nations at war. One is on the offensive and the other with the player's help must defend. Since they are located in two different islands, the logical solution for the age of planes, well, is planes. You might start to notice that all of this reminds of historically inaccurate and oversimplified Battle of Britain scenario. And you are absolutely correct. With that in mind, let's move on to the more specific details. The time of the campaign will be limited to about 20 days or so. I haven't fully decided what is the correct amount for a game like this and each day will have an increasingly different difficulty. The main goal on the technical side of things is to make a small managing system that keeps track of days, has the ability to save, load and launch the game scene with the correct values. You might ask, what are the correct values? And for now the answer is quite simple. It is all the things that changes the game's difficulty. First of all we have enemy bombers and you can increase difficulty with them in three different ways. Fire rate, which basically means how much bullets an enemy bomber fires in one single interval. It varies between 2 and 6. If this limit is exceeded, the game becomes one big suffer. Little story that leads on to the next thing is about how I failed to do correct math. I'm not surprised by the way since math was never my strength. I was writing AI for my enemy machine guns, and I needed to calculate where the plane will be in the time frame when the fired bullet travels the path between the player and the enemy. I tried to solve this math problem with vectors. This vector right here represents the gun barrel and keeps pointing at the player. But to compensate for the speed, I must fire the bullet to the place where the player will be in the future. That probably sounds easier than it was. Anyways, I made the mistake somewhere in the code and the AI is not entirely accurate. I see this as an opportunity to compensate this weakness in other way. You see, this also works in real life. During World War II, bomber gunners had a very difficult job to hit fast flying aircrafts. It is almost impossible to accurately calculate the plane's speed, your own velocity and the ballistics. So it is quite hard to hit a plane which is constantly moving up and down or sideways. But when the plane is preparing for the attack, and makes a dive onto you, it starts to move in the straight line directly into you, reducing the lead the gunner must give significantly. This is also the case in my game. If you are flying up and down, you are almost safe, but getting caught in a dive will most likely send you into the shadow realm. This whole D route brings us to the next point, which is maximizing the effectiveness. Bomber is rarely flown alone. Because if you form a huge formation, it is easier to concentrate fire on the enemy interceptors and make their life much harder. So I also added different formations in my game. We have horizontal formation, vertical formation and the hardest chest formation. When you encounter one of those, you must dodge bullets from different angles simultaneously firing shots. And the third thing is the bomber's count obviously. The more there are, the harder the game becomes. That is all about the enemies, but they are not the only thing that makes the game challenging. Long time ago I also added anti-aircraft rounds. The rounds fly from the bottom of the screen and explodes if anybody gets close to them. Also I should mention the weather factor, but it doesn't really impact the game's difficulty too much. 
Yes, it reduces visibility, but it is quite minor. So I will leave the weather factor as random probability. So let's keep all the things in mind and start doing something. I'll catch up to you guys in a few days when I will have some updates to show. Today is Tuesday, the next week, and as you can see spring finally decided to come. I would really much enjoy to do a full workout outside, but my body feels like a burning wreck from Sunday's airsoft battle. So I guess there will be only light exercises this week for me. Speaking about the game, I made some ok progress, which took a bit longer than expected. So we have campaign's interface here. This is just a draft that should represent the layout. In the middle we have combat report, which will provide information about the last mission and the upcoming one. Uh, here if I click the new mission button, it should launch the game. And uh, this new game button resets the day's amount. Let's see how the code looks that, uh, that drives this whole beast. Uh, here I have switch statement with 20 cases. Uh, each case represents the day. And if you know the better way to optimize this mess, please let me know in the comments below, because I haven't figured out an easier way to do it. In each case we have information about the game mode, uh, and we build the game string which consists of day, which uh, repre represents scenery, conditions, it can be dry or uh, cloudy, also seconds between each anti-aircraft rounds fired, uh, bomber's informations and how much bullets does the bomber fire. So, it looks quite easy. Also, there is a save system that saves the whole game after each mission. Let's see how it works. The day's number is 1, so it means that we are on the first day. And if I click the new mission button now, it should launch the mission. The mission is launched successfully, so if I press resume, I can play the game now and let's see what happens if I, for example, crash into the enemy. And we have an uh, end game scene which says you have crash landed your plane and you have two options. Either you can refly the mission or continue. If you press continue, uh, you will be forwarded to the second day and as you can see the number changed and we are on the second day. So there is still a lot of things to do but I like how the game works. If I press new game button it goes back to 1. If you complete the mission successfully or retreat you should get a following message which says you have successfully retreated with a happy picture. So yeah, everything seems to be working just fine. And now I will have to work on it a lot more. I guess that's all the things I really wanted to share with you. Thank you for sticking around and I really hope I will see you in the next devlog.